Previously on Second Fiddles, replacing the disgraced hero known as Slap, Pitch is now a card-carrying member of Rose City's B-League. And that's not figurative. She literally has a card. After years of sidekicking, Tammy is finally holding auditions for her very own sidekick. There was also some stuff about me and my family, but I'm a little mad at Linus right now, so we're going to let that plot marinate until the next episode. Let's begin! Episode 17, Retcon. Hello? I'm your 3 o'clock appointment? You're my only appointment. I like to only schedule one a day, because sidekicks are exhausting. That would explain why the waiting room was empty. Indeed! Call me Retcon. Hey, Retcon. So, I'm Pitch. Take a seat, get comfy, and let's have a chat. This is less of a proper audition and more of a conversation. Sound good to you? Yeah, yes, that's fine. I was going to force you to sit in an uncomfortable chair or stool or something and see how long you could deal with it, like the heroes used to do to me. But I appreciate lower back health more than testing your patience. Thanks, I guess. You're not like the other heroes I've worked with, are you? Hell, I hope not. Who were they, these other heroes? Did you read my CV? I skimmed it. I just want to hear it from you. Start from the beginning. Well, neither of my parents are powered. So when I was born, they did not think to- No, 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 no. Not that beginning. Start with sidekicking experience, please. Ah, okay. My powers don't lend themselves well to heroics, but they're really effective at benefiting the public perception of heroes. I moved to Rose City after college, where I majored in public relations. I've had a fairly clear trajectory in mind since I was in high school, and the day I got here, I booked a gig with the A-League. Before you get into that, could you explain exactly how your powers work? Sure. I can manipulate memories. What do you want to know? So, you're kind of like that flashy thing in the Men in Black movies, right? You can make people forget stuff? It's way more than that. The neuralizer, the flashy thing, just erases memories. I can change them. It can be as minor as making someone misremember a song lyric, or as extensive as, say, having someone forget that I exist. That would be why you didn't list any references, I assume? After I've sidekicked for someone, I erase their memories of me. I've worked with the A-League for years, but no one remembers who I am. I always tell them ahead of time it's part of my contract. It's safer that way. I know everyone's secrets, but they don't know that I do. Then why would you tell me about it? By the time I leave, you won't remember most of this conversation. Hmm. You're very honest. I like that. What's the point of lying when telling the truth ultimately has zero consequences? What prevents me from listening back to my recording of this later? You certainly have been caught on camera before. I actually came in once before this and turned your camera off before rebooting this conversation. What? Ah, so you did. I didn't even notice the little red light wasn't on anymore. You actually did notice the first time, but I made you forget that you should be checking it. You're a real mind aren't you? (laughs) You said that the first time, too. You'd be surprised how often I hear people continually repeating themselves. So, you're able to curate your own life experiences then, aren't you? I mean, to an extent. You could say that. Do your powers wear off? Not that I've ever seen. I made my dad think the dog knocked over a vase that I broke when I was a kid, and I bring it up once a year to see who he thinks did it. Are you close with your parents? Not exactly. Um, We talk all the time, but they prefer not to be around me. I obviously don't want them to forget about me, but they don't want to lose little memories here and there. So they try to keep their distance. Have you tried maybe not using your power on them? You're judging. That's fine. I haven't changed their memories in years. When I was a teenager, though, and my powers were first developing, I kind of abused them. I abused my powers, I mean, not my parents. I would have done the same thing, probably. So, your powers work in proximity? You don't have to, like, touch anyone? If they were within a certain range, yeah. No touch needed. Can you only do one person at a time? It depends. 
Everyone remembers things differently, so my powers work best if I can tap into each person's memories individually. If 200 bystanders were to witness a hero poop their costume during a fight with a villain, for example, I could make the entire group forget it at once. But the memory I put in to replace the pooping would be identical for all 200 people. And yes, that's not a hypothetical situation. It definitely happened. Let me guess. Was it Amalgamation Man? How did you know? I got stuck in an elevator with him one time. He smelled so bad I thought he sharded himself. His costume looks like it takes forever to put on and off, so it makes sense. Yeah, I don't miss working with him. I wish I could wipe my own memory of those smells. Hey, have you ever heard the expression, it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission? Yeah, why? Is that a mantra of yours? Kind of. It's weird to think of never having to ask for forgiveness or permission, because you can take a risk or make a mistake and then erase it from existence. Not exactly. If I get in a car accident, I can make someone forget who caused the accident. But it doesn't fix the car. It's not time travel. It feels like it sometimes, but if I get punched in the face, I can't retcon my black eye away. Can you return someone's memories back to normal? Fix what you've changed? Yeah, I mean, I think so. They won't be as detailed, probably, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. You've never tried to restore memories before? Like, you never regretted changing something and tried to change it back? Nope. That's literally never crossed my mind. Wow. Have you ever taken an improv class? What? No. Why? They're ridiculous, but they have a rule. Yes and... If someone comes up with an idea, you can't negate it. So if we were doing improv right now and you asked me how my pregnancy was going, I wouldn't say, I'm not pregnant. I'd say something like, I'm having octuplets. Get what I'm saying? You're saying that I use my powers like I'm doing improv. That's what it sounds like. You keep yes-anding people's memories. Hmm. You're not wrong. I can see why you'd be an asset. If I'm fighting a villain or some henchies and a civilian gets caught in the crossfire and, let's say, I blow out their eardrums, you could make them forget that I did it? Ding, ding, ding. She gets it. I feel like that's a slippery slope. What about accountability? (laughs) What's that? (laughs) Just kidding. I mean, I was good enough for the A League. Why shouldn't someone from the B League want me too? You're going to erase most of this, like you said. So could you give me some examples? I think it's only right that I ask about your work history. Other than Amalgamation Man and his poopy armored pants, of course. I worked with most of the members of the A-League, but I spent most of my early sidekicking days with Smasher. Huh. You must have been his sidekick before Recall, I'm guessing. Ironic that he's had two sidekicks with memory-based powers. Why were you paired with him? Here's one of those secrets I'm going to have to take back from you later. Smasher isn't always a big, strong, beasty thing. He's a scientist, and he transforms into Smasher when he needs the strength. Is it like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde thing? No, it's not a split personality or anything. He's always himself, but his power is actually the ability to trade brain power for brawn. The higher his intelligence, the weaker his body, and vice versa. So the stronger he becomes as Smasher the more primitive his brain becomes. Huh. That makes a lot of sense. Why doesn't he just transform part of the way, so he's only a little dumber, but faster and stronger? He can, but I think he saves that mostly for the bedroom. Gross. Okay, actually not gross. That's kind of hot. When he does that, he still pretty much looks like himself and his true identity would be revealed, He transforms as much as he can without hindering basic cognition. He can get even bigger, but he could lose the ability to speak or comprehend what's going on around him. How did you fit into that equation? Why did you work with him? If Smasher were to transform in public, people would see it, and they'd learn his identity. Also, they'd see his penis. He busts right out of his clothes and has to change into something bigger. He normally has a bag with him with his costume in it, so when something happens and he needs to transform, it takes him some time to find a place where he can change and no one can see him. 
With me by his side, he could change anywhere, and I would just make everyone forget that they saw his face. Or his penis. It gets enormous. I honestly wish I could make myself forget, but it's burned into my brain. I'm going to have an interesting conversation with Sophia next time I see her. You won't. Remember? You won't remember. Oh, crap. Right. That sucks. You called her Sophia? How do you know Recall's identity? Oops. I wish I had your powers so I could make you forget I just said that. Sophia's a friend. How is she? How is she doing? Wondering if your replacement is doing a better job sidekicking than you? No, I'm an amazing sidekick. The woman that you call Sophia is Smasher's daughter, and I spent a lot of time with her before she became Recall. Why aren't you reacting? You should be shocked. Oh, yeah. No, I already knew all that. Sophia knows, too. She's on her way to find her dad as we speak. Shit. 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 Seriously? Why? Is that a problem? Jeez. All the color's draining from your face. Are you going to barf? How much does she know? Not much. That's why she's going to find him. To confront him. Why are you so worried? Are you... <gasps> oh. My. God. Are you the reason Sophia lost her memories? Answer me! Yes! Yes, it was me. Calm down. Tell me everything. Now. I'm not going to let you remember any of it, so what's the point? Please, I care about her. Just tell me. Fine. So, um, Sophia actually has more than one power. In addition to her memory, she can do something else. Yes, I am aware. Get to the new information, please. What do you mean you're aware? Did she remember her past? No, she turned into, well, Smasher, but with long hair and boobs. A lady Smasher. When was this? Recently. It only happened the one time. What happened? She hit her head hard, and then she got angry. That's pretty much it. She damaged a thing in her head. Her neural inhibitor. We put that in to prevent her from transforming after... <sighs> after what? What happened? Sophia transformed for the first time while she was in an argument with her sister, and oh they... Oh my god! Are you her sister? What? N no! Uh, why would you think that? You both have memory powers, you both sidekicked for the same guy, and you're concerned for her well-being. Okay, well, when you put it that way, it's still a no. We're not related. Just listen to the rest of the story, okay? Okay, so they were arguing while Sophia was driving them in a car, and when she transformed, she hurt her sister. Okay, I don't buy it. One of my other friends caused a fatal car accident when her powers manifested, so the chances of them both having that in common are crazy bananas. That's a weird coincidence, but I assure you, that's all it is. Besides, Sophia didn't kill her or disfigure her or anything, but her sister did leave town afterward. Sophia hated it that she inherited her father's powers, so she convinced him to implant the neural inhibitor to prevent any more accidents. It was only meant to be temporary. So why wasn't it? Sophia felt so guilty. She asked me to erase her memory of transforming. So I did. I was trying to be nice, to be a good friend, but I'd never tried manipulating her memories before. It never occurred to me that her memory powers would react badly with mine, so I was shocked when a simple memory erasure started snowballing. I fought as hard as I could to hold on to them, but her memories pretty much turned into sand. They started slipping through my fingers, and before I knew it, I wiped everything from before the transformation. Ouch. Not a great mistake to make. No. Smasher fired me, but I made him forget what happened. He remembers the transformation and the accident with his daughters, but I made him think that the neural inhibitor is what erased her memories. He felt responsible, so he let her pick the name Sophia, pretended he was just a scientist, and then brought her on as his sidekick to keep a close eye on her. Wow. You completely suck. Excuse me? You shouldn't have changed his memories. I know. I know. I regret that. It was almost instinctual. I was so guilty and so upset. I wasn't thinking rationally. Wait, did you say pick the name, Sophia? What's her real name? Doesn't matter. You won't remember anyway. 
You're only going to change my memories from this conversation, right? You can't erase my memory that Sophia is Smasher's daughter because I'm not the only one who knows, and she knows. And if I forget something like that, it would be really suspicious. Don't worry, I'm not cruel or evil or anything. I'm fairly objective when it comes to using my powers. If I wanted to ruin lives, I'd become a villain. I'd be an awesome supervillain, wouldn't I? But I don't have the heart for that. Honestly, I think about recall every day. Why don't you return her memories then? I don't know if that would even work. Trying it for the first time resulted in complete memory loss, so attempting to reverse it could make it even worse. I could wipe out more important stuff, like from her language center. I don't think she'd want to have to relearn how to understand English or how to go to the bathroom. I managed to save that stuff the first time around, but I don't want to take that chance a second time. Well, you saved most of it. She forgot how to use contractions, and she kind of talks like a robot. Or maybe a Vulcan. Since she hit her head, though, that's been changing a little. Really? That's good news. Does that mean her memories could come back on their own? I have no idea. Maybe. Huh. I thought this was going to be a quick and easy audition, but now I don't know what to think. If you want, I can make you think it was quick and easy, but I'll probably just make you think I didn't show up at all. Your life must be so weird. You have no idea. So, about Sophia, is she... is she happy? Is she struggling? I think about her every single day. She's happy enough. She has a new cat that she loves and friends, and she already viewed Smasher as a father figure anyway, so she's more curious than anything else. She's hurt that he lied to her, obviously, but she's so eager to make that connection, I think they'll be able to rebuild their relationship. It won't be the same, but they have time. If he isn't already dead, that is. That's... Fairly unclear. Dead? What happened to him? I don't know. He went to another galaxy, now he's MIA. Yada, yada, yada. Sophia went to find him. You know, a typical Thursday. Wow. So, I think I should go now. Wait. While I have you here, I need to ask you something. Your trauma makes you who you are, Pitch. I'm not erasing it. How did you know I was going to... Traumatic things shape who you are. You grow and evolve based on your past experiences. There are some things that... Have you seen the movie Inside Out? The kids movie with the colorful little brain people? Yes, that's the one. I was in the room when my brother watched it, but I was only half paying attention. Well, they talk about core memories, and trauma is normally grouped into that. If I were to take away your worst memory, whatever that may be... It would take away something that shaped who you are today. Your identity would start to fracture, and your personality could change. You would lose all sense of self. Maybe that's what I want. I don't know who I am. I'm supposed to be finding a sidekick, but... You don't think you deserve to be a hero? Okay, so, like, you should really be a therapist or something. Hey, who knows? If this superhero stuff doesn't work out... Maybe I could go back to school. Stranger things have happened. Hey, Retcon? Yeah? You're a mess, and I would never want you as my sidekick. I don't disagree with you. Could you make me forget how sea urchin tastes? My boyfriend made me try it last week, and I threw up in my mouth. The bile actually tasted better than the urchin. I could, but then you might try it again without the hindsight. Is sea urchin gross? Yeah, It has the consistency of slimy peanut butter, but tastes really fishy. And to make it worse, I once fought a really nasty henchy named Sea Urchin last year. So that name just has bad connotations for me. (laughs) I've met that henchman before. I thought he'd be covered in spines or something, but he's just a street urchin who can only say words that begin with the letter C. He kept telling me to chill over and over again. Really? He just kept calling me a c***. I like you, Pitch. I... I wish I was going to remember this conversation. Me too. Is this going to hurt? No, but even if it did, you wouldn't know. You are so confusing. I know. Okay, are you ready? Wait, I have one more question. What? Part of your story didn't line up. If Sophia's sister left town, did you follow her and change her memory too? I mean... What happens when she comes back and her memories are different from the rest of the family? 
Uh huh. I may have lied about that. Even knowing that you were going to erase my memory, you still didn't tell the truth. What's wrong with you? Fine. I'm her sister. Happy now? Not really. After I accidentally caused her amnesia, I felt so guilty. I did something a little extreme. My dad currently thinks I'm working across the country at a PR firm, and I haven't returned any of his phone calls. He thinks we all got in a huge fight, and I moved away. He doesn't think I'll ever come back. But the truth is, I never left. That is messed up. So you had no idea he was in another galaxy? Not a clue. Well, hopefully he and Sophia will come back safely, and you can make amends. If you're not lying, and it really was an accident, you should have nothing to worry about. You weren't lying, were you? I was lying less than the last time I lied to you. Damn it! Okay, you're ticking me off. Just wipe my memory, okay? Gladly. And pitch? What? Thank you for being Sophia's friend. I'm glad she connected with people. She'd probably prefer to connect with her actual sister. I know. Ew. I just realized when you were sidekicking for Smasher, you were forced to see your dad's giant schlong over and over again. Why do you think I said it was burned into my memory? Okay, I'm over this conversation. You'll be forgetting everything in five, four, son of a bitch, three, two. In this episode of Second Fiddles. You just heard Liz Thompson as Tammy, Mia Canali as Retcon, and John Pupo as MacGuffin. All of the sound design and writing was done by Matt Johnson, and the new theme song was composed by Pete Johnson. No relation. Thanks for listening, and I hope you don't forget about this episode. That was a terrible joke. Goodbye.